<laughs> All right. So, uh, Lori, yeah. Um, oh, uh, oh, are we going there? Yeah, we're no. going there. Okay. We're going there. Okay. Okay. Then, what's your next movie? As if yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> it is a film called Sexual Drive, and it is directed by um, Koda Yoshida, who I am not familiar with. Um, <clears throat> so, t in Japan, and, and there's a little bit of a theme of like Japan going on, isn't there? Here, that's kind of cool. Um, so in Japan, um, there's different like genres of movies that they release there, and there's a, a type called pink you or pink films, which are essentially like Japanese softcore pornography. This is technically one of those, although it is not because there is no sex in the movie at all. Then it's and, not. Don't <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Don't get our hopes up. Yeah, say, I know. I mean, this is I kind of porn, I may have no just, nudity. <laughs> <laughs> I may have just like ruined this the if anybody who watches this might not want to watch it now. But like <laughs> um it aside from that, like it is um it's written um I feel like Quentin Tarantino-ish kind of writing off of this. Um, it's a, it's, they call it a triptych. So it, there's three vignettes and they're all related to um, like weird um, aphrodisiac foods, like Japanese foods that could be considered aphrodisiacs and like, um, and different, and there's always like a couple and then there's this one man um, and his, I think his character is called Kiru and he uh, is the link between all three of the stories. And these stories are just like um, the way that they, it's like Takashi Miike like level, like insanity, but there's no like violence or gore or sexuality. It's all in the dialogue and like implied in the dialogue. So you feel like you can see what's happening like in your head almost. Like they create these sort of like things where you, um, like the stories imply a lot of things and you can kind of like go, your, let your mind go with it. And um, I thought that that was very cool. And um, I gave it a 10 because I think it's like one of the most well-written films that I've, uh, seen i mean definitely this year if not in a long time i don't know if a lot of people will see it because of the subject matter and it's very quirky it's like um it's it's like i it's like almost comedic but not really and the, it's just creepy and it, it gives you a lot of like emotions <laughs> i like how you're it's like it's softcore porn, but it's not, and it's yeah. Uh, it's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, give me an idea. Like, what's the idea of one of the stories? And and okay, you know. that that's cool. Um, so there's well, the the guy Kiru. Um, apparently, well, he gets this woman. Um, is driving her car, and she apparently she has a panic disorder, and it's the first time that she's driven her car by herself. And she hits him with her car. And he um, gets, he's like, no, no police, just give me a ride somewhere. And then, so he gets in the car with her and she's on her way to get this specific type of tofu, like a spicy tofu called Wapo tofu at the grocery store. And so she is like, oh shit, like I have to take this guy because I, he could, you know, I hit him with my car. And then she, it comes to find out that they went to elementary school together. And he, he said that she like tortured him in elementary school and like caused his, like his masochism that exists to this day or whatever. And tells her not to get the, like, um, the, uh, the fake spicy tofu to get the real spicy tofu because she's like a sadist and needs to cook the spicy tofu. <laughs> so that's, that's an example of one of the stories. 
crazy. Oh, right. yeah. um, you yeah. mentioned when discussing it, uh, you found the movie to be a little bit Tarantino-esque um, in terms of the dialogue. Can you give, if not direct quotes as examples, the, uh, exactly what you mean by that? If it is it just like the stylization of the dialogue? Yeah. Or is it how it mixes action, body humor, drama, and that sort of thing? Well, I think that it's like its ability to, um, because, you know, in films, there's this thing that they say typically that is show, don't tell. And Quentin Tarantino sometimes goes against that. Noah Baumbach does that. And it actually works. And like, this is the same kind of thing. It's like the language is very uh, visual and, you know, takes you on a, like almost a separate journey than what you're seeing on screen. So it's like you're, you're experiencing two different, um, you know, sensations at once, which is what like, I feel like when I watch a Quentin Tarantino, uh, Quentin Tarantino movie, I feel that that's like very similar in the, as as how the dialogue works in this film. Yeah, I mean, there's no rule that says you have you can't tell. Uh, yeah, you've got to be skillful and artful at it. If you're gonna yeah. if you're gonna break a rule, so to speak, um, you you've got to know what you're doing. And it sounds like exactly. All right, 